Okay. Uh, when last we left off, which is a good two and a half, three weeks ago at this point, um, the Left Stars had been exploring the capital city of Consonants, uh, stuck between figuring out your own goals and what you wanted to pursue. Uh, the idea of traveling back to Horizon with Avendir to help him prepare the caravan of his uh, very expensive, highly sought after brandy for the upcoming auctions you're just doing throughout Ventus or to tackle some of your own goals in town. Um, ultimately, you decided to stay in the city. Uh, throughout the day, you did some shopping, um, explored Titlefall University Incognito for some of you, uh, investigated the whereabouts of the recovery squad, um, Aesop's uh, family slash sort of people who's folks who he's worked with before um, and uh, visited the temple of Apos to get leads on how to cure Neptus. Um, as the sun set, uh, Avendir had, uh, had a friendly challenge with Clax to prove his roadworthiness, um, feeling that he, feeling that there was some anxiety about letting him ride alone. And, uh, and he departed after that, um, giving a letter of introduction to the party to visit his ship, the Azure Phoenix. Um, and that's where we left off. So as Avendir sort of, he had met you at the gates in the early evening. Uh, and after a long day walking throughout the city, um, you were all just sort of standing at the gates, watching his wagon get smaller and smaller in the distance. Um, and sunset is uh, coming in the next few hours. So, what would you all like to do? Um, since we're already outside the the city walls, um, Clax just turns to the group, says, "So I've got some. I gotta stretch my legs after that fight, and I've got some some people to check in on since last time I was here. So I'm gonna go head on down to the edge here and." Go meet up with some people, but I'll be back uh, a couple hours, or probably four or five hours from now, if you guys want to just meet back up at Aesop's place. Would you like company? Do you feel like you need company, or is this kind of like a solo thing? I'm thinking it's a solo thing, um, mm -hmm. and I don't think I don't think I need any help or anything. It's nothing, nothing shady like that. <clears throat> Sounds good. You sure? <laughs> I'm I'm as sure as. You know, anything. I mean, I could get struck by an arrow just standing here. Flint, roll an insight check just because. <laughs> Since you asked. <laughs> yeah, Ble believe what you want to believe. If he says he's fine, he's probably fine. I trust you. Plus, it's not like the edge has a lot of scenic things to go check out. It's not like the rest of the city. So. Alright, catch up with you guys later. Alrighty, be safe. Fun. Don't get Kinda yourself killed. Rub my ribs a little bit. <laughs> I look to Flint and I'm like, maybe he just needs to do some like, maybe he wants to meet up like an old friend, like an old guard friend. I don't know. But I get it. He wants to do things yeah. on his own. Uh, meditative retreat into the wilderness to really just find himself. I no, assume it's one of his going old... into the city. I assume it's one of his old cop buddies. But it's probably fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um what what time is it during the during the day, DM? Uh it is just a, a few hours away from sunset, so um, mm. probably like a late dinner slash time to head home. Y'all want to head back to my place, get some food on the way, maybe? Sure. That works for me. Okay. Are you guys just, you know, picking up a Picking up a sandwich on the way back, like nowhere in particular, or um, are you taking them somewhere that you want to go? 
Um, well, as I'm, like, as we're walking back, I actually go up to Mouse, and I'm like, hey, like, do you want to bake something tonight? I haven't baked in a while, and I feel like... Have you ever baked something, Mouse? I feel like you'd be a good baker, but I just get the vibes. I don't know if I've asked. I mean, I'm always interested to try new things. I, I mean, everybody can cook a little bit, right? Um, I wouldn't say I'm that great at it either, but I just feel like you'd be a good, like, cooking partner to have. Lovely. Just show me where to start the fire. Great. <laughs> um, I'm assuming that, oh, hmm. should I assume that my parents have <laughs> the ingredients to bake like a bread? <laughs> I'm not sure. I would say yeah, dry. Yeah. I would say dry ingredients are are easy to for them to store um, when they're gone for a while. So I would, I'd say you're pretty. You feel pretty secure. Okay. Especially uh, if you if you yourself do baking, you probably have a, a stockpile. Right. Okay. Um, so yeah, I I'd say we'd pick something on the on the way uh, to back to my parents' house. Um, and then we'll bake. Mouse and I can bake. Okay. What kind of bread are we making? Do you have, like, a local specialty? I was thinking more like a sourdough. Sounds delicious. I was about to say, it just kind of sounds good right now, doesn't it? I mean, it's bread. It's always good. It's true. <laughs> do, do your parents have a starter? <laughs> a starter like, like like are you not that i know a lot about bread sure but i'm pretty sure sourdough you need a thing to then make that like is funky and fermenty oh it takes time in advance you can't just be like oh wow bread <laughs> that's in fact one of the few breads you cannot just be like oh wow bread it is true you, if you're going to make sourdough, you have to have a starter that you, like, feed. <laughs> but the more, the more you know. <laughs> um, and then I'll probably suggest, like, a simple white bread. Nope, we're making a sourdough. We are Great. figuring this out. We have a plan. And I, I think if we just, like, put our heads together and maybe with some of Drado's clear knowledge, we could figure out how to make bread. Great. Maybe it could be a group effort thing. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, really? I've made, like, fungal starters in the past. I, I, I'm not sure if they've always been food safe, but sometimes. Sure. That uh, gif is very relevant right now. Thank <laughs> you. Well, we will come back to this and see <laughs> just what kind of success you have. Um, and it's going to be the most... The most intensive roles we've ever seen in this campaign. But in the meantime, uh, well, I'll first say as you're sort of traversing the city, um, you all, as the sun starts to set, are sort of struck once again by the sort of radiance of the uh, the citadel in the middle and sort of just like the the unchanging almost light that comes within as it shifts from daytime to nighttime um almost serving perhaps to some could almost be a, a sign of comfort or like a a lighthouse of sorts pointing towards the, the center of the city but um but it gives you enough luminance to uh traverse most of the roads uh without much need for pulling out any of your your extra lights or dancing lights or things like that. I feel like this makes it much harder to see the stars. I'm not sure why they would not turn off their lights at night. Maybe like a safety thing? I don't know. I would agree though. For as long as I lived here, it's always been hard to see the stars, which are unfortunate. Are you looking for stars, Mouse? 
Is that on your walk? I mean, if it's getting dark, Mouse is probably always just observing the skies and how things may or may not look different, both looking for comfort of things she's familiar with and perhaps anything that doesn't usually show up. Okay. Uh, give me a perception roll. Ooh. Oh, good old halflings. Um, now roll a d10 for me. Ooh. Um, as you're walking, uh, sort of placing your trying to connect the dots to some familiar sights in the sky a another star stands out that uh that you'd heard about back home um from from olive this is what is referred to as the sapphire serenade it is a Kind of dazzling blue constellation of uh, uh, blue stars that glitter, kind of like a precious gemstone in the, in the night sky. And the stories that you've heard about this is that it's sort of said to be the embodiment of a celestial, si excuse me, celestial siren of sorts. Um, somebody whose enchanting voice can be heard throughout the stars and... Um, kind of thought to be like a, a haunting but beautiful melody. And it's one of those stories that you can lean into it or not if you believe it, but they say that those who sort of stare into it for too long might be lulled into a, a peaceful slumber. And that has like a variety of different connotations. Um, you sort of like look up at the sky and see that. I see it, immediately look away, and tell everyone else, hey, there's this star in the sky, tell them the whole story, and refuse to, like, point out which one it is. Wait, so it'll just, like, make you sleep well? I mean, I think it's quite a bit more than that. At least, that was my takeaway. Oh, it's just a... It's a star. I'll probably look up with Draw and try to find the star she's talking about. Yeah, as soon as you start talking about it, Draw will look straight up. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, the the it's a constellation, and so it's not a single star. Oh. And it's without Mouse sort of there to guide you. Um, you have no idea what you're looking for. <laughs> you find it, Draw? I think it's that one, the one that's like surrounded by like like three other ones. I mean, aren't they all surrounded by stars? No, like the one where there's like the three like really close to it. Uh, yeah, like uh, that one to the left. Nope, but maybe next time. <laughs> Should really spend more time observing them. Not the one, just not those. <laughs> like great. <laughs> um, and you all continue on your uh, baking journey. Um, moving on to Clax, are you taking a walk around the city walls, or are you kind of going through the city? Um, or, or where, I, I should actually, confirm where are you going? Yeah, actually, so that might be kind of a Shonda to DM question here. Um, knowing the reputation of the edge is, and having been here before, do I feel comfortable walking through the edge or should I go through the town and come out the, the southern gate towards, because I'm not sure exactly the location in the edge of where um, the, the elegant rapier is. Sure, it's it's actually quite, it's, uh, I'm just going to ping down here. Gotcha. Um, so, then I, yeah, you, no, you, you, I, I would say you would feel relatively safe. It's just a matter of like, what do you, what kind of sights do you want to see? Um, knowing that, and I'm assuming I still have time if I were to go through the city, because it looks like it'd be a little bit longer of a track. Um, but I think just being through the city would be a little, um, 
I don't want to say necessarily safer, but just there's more there that I can keep, keep an eye on, kind of see what, what the guard rotations are, which units are in what, what uh, sector or what precinct, um, see if there's any other happenings going on that I might have missed as I walk through. So I'll go on down and then see if I can't catch the uh, factory precinct accent down towards uh, the elegant rapier. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll me an investigation check just to sort of see if you spot sort of what what guards are where. Not bad for me. Okay. Um, I'll give you one of the two. Do you want to know who's at Stone Landing or Factory Precinct? Uh, let's do Factory Precinct. Um, you sort of like as you're walking through, uh, perhaps distracted just as you're walk walking past the the barracks through the stone landing and um, unsure how to feel about being so close to uh, the place that you used to sort of lay your head. Um, maybe a little bit distracted when you're there, but uh, getting closer and closer to your destination, starting to focus up a little bit and um, you spot uh, it is probably pisses you off a little bit. You see a couple people clearly in guards uniform, clearly perhaps night watch on duty who are kind of pushing around a little too many coins um, on a nearby bench uh, near the solar square market. And this is sort of the, the Dara's direction group. These, the guards who are a little bit wealthier than they should be, um, who seem to be just sort of like, instead of being on watch, seem to just be taking a relaxing, a relaxing night of gambling with money that that you would suspect um, is a little bit over the the guard pay. We'll say. Um, just as a, I don't want to make it obvious, but just kind of clock and see if I recognize them or even if I don't just kind of make a mental note of, of any distinguishing characteristics and who they were just in case I have a uh, conversation with, with uh, either Longo or, or Dar or something like that just to Okay um, I don't know that you have familiarity with sort of the guard members themselves but you don't, no, I, you, I don't I wouldn't. you don't see the lieutenant as part of this table and that's that would be the one person that you'd have maybe more directly networked with so yeah um, when i say just get a beat so like if i were to if i were to run into yeah, yeah. the lieutenant just like be able to describe you know yeah. hey i saw a dwarf and a blah blah, blah okay. whatever okay yeah you uh i don't have those on hand but you no, you're, 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 you're you, make, you make a mental note um and you continue on to the elegant rapier yes please um as you're sort of exiting the factory precinct uh the edge has always been one of the more gloomy or drown downtrodden areas of the city um this is where a number of uh where there seems to be like more ramshackle homes or people who are sleeping outside um this is where you know in in this time that you're even walking through, go and roll me a perception check. And and what are you what do you use to kind of give yourself light in this sort of night walk? Because as you start to get to the edge, there's a lot less radiance from the citadel as well. Um. So I guess my first question is is how how low light are we talking? Are we just talking like a a, a stroll as you've adjusted to, to nighttime kind of walking at night or are we talking the further the further away you get the the harder it is to see and it will eventually be like there's no light pollution or anything so it, it tends to be like pitch black the further away you get from the uh, citadel and okay. the edge is the furthest you can be um if, it, if it's getting that dark um uh i think Probably not to draw attention to myself. Let me look at my pack. I think I might just try and light a torch rather than using my axe. Um, give me one second here, just to make sure I have a torch. Yeah, I have a, a 
uh, torch in a tinderbox. So I'll just go ahead and take my time, strike up a little, strike up one of my torches, and uh, I can decrement that from my inventory too. No, and then uh, we're not keeping count on that. Okay, I was just sort of just getting a vibe on if you were just walking around with your axe or not. But no, I don't want to draw too much attention to myself. So just uh, kind of light a torch and make my way on down. Okay. Um, you you approach the uh, dive bar, for lack of a better word, that you know to be the elegant rapier, and there's sort of like a a place to drop your torches as you enter the inside, um, where it is a little bit more well lit, albeit low lit, and the atmosphere is. Um, it's, you know, this is a place that people come to get a drink, not to have a good time. Uh, and it seems like what you would expect is a a bar that the right, the local regulars will come to in order to sort of like drown their sorrows a little bit or um, and, and probably the place that has hosted a few brawls in its in its time uh, when the time calls for it. But um, it seems at this time of night to be relatively well attended. There are sort of a, a number of small booths on the perimeter as well as like seats at, up at the bar. Um, what are you, what would you like to sort of do? Um, I think I'd grab a booth for this. Just kind of take, you know, walk in, see if I uh, see a Lua or if I just, uh, if I don't, I'll just grab a booth. Okay. We'll go to the bar, order a drink because I'm, don't think there's table service here. Yeah. Grab a drink and go sit at a booth. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think you've actually seen Aula. Oh, correct. Yes. She was behind me. That is right. Um, but go ahead and roll me a perception check nonetheless. Okay. Nope. <laughs> okay. Um, you, you grab a drink. It's like two copper. Don't worry about it. But, um, okay. Uh, and you sit down at the booth um, some time passes and the darkness out the window uh, starts to seep in a little bit more to the point where you're sort of recognizing that um this place is perhaps as far as possible from Aesop's place. <laughs> uh, and it's going to be a late night for you if you wait too long. Um, I'll, uh, about how are we talking like a three hour walk back from here? Two hour walk? What are we talking for a walk back approximately? Um, I'll give it till what I'd assume is approximately like a 10, 10 ish. That's I, I would say it's nine ish right now. <laughs> oh, so, right, okay. We'll, yeah, we'll give it. Okay. Um, your perception of a six, you don't notice anything, but are, you do eventually hear a voice from behind you. Um, and it maybe strikes you as a surprise that you were expecting it, but you have no idea where they came from. Uh, and this is a, a familiar voice of an individual who you haven't seen, but must be sitting in the booth behind you, kind of back to back uh, from where you are. And her voice sort of rings out in, in a tone that is quiet and private and you know that you know that others can't be listening in but you know that it's directed at you at the same time and she says I've received word from my source at the Heroes Academy that their client one Avendir Summerbreeze expressed immense satisfaction with the recruitment process Thank you for the gentle nudge. Uh, 
Does this mean that you're in? Yeah. I'm working for Avendir. It's going pretty well, and I want to say thank you. So what did you want to talk to me about? I'm trying to keep it somewhat friendly. You know, like, it's not yeah. a direct, like, why'd you drag me out here type thing. Yeah, yeah. There's sort of a pause, as you imagine that she's considering, and says, Well... The work begins when you're ready to begin it, but it is going to be difficult and complicated, and uh, and I understand that you are sort of on a team now. Yeah, probably the first time I've been on a. What I'd say is a real team. How trustworthy are your companions? Compared to everybody else I've either worked with in the guard or anything else, I, as of right now, I trust them more than anybody else. Well, there's this one guy. Kind of a tall, dark guy, kind of moody, likes to hang in the shadows. He He's a little... No, nah, just kidding. Not saying that, but He's no. He's not that tall. How dare you? <laughs> but yes, I trust him. And the best part is, they have good good hearts around them. They're good people. I. I'm glad to hear that. At the same time, I suppose I, before we get too heavy into our work, there's a degree of vulnerability that I have in bringing more people in. And yet, we need the help. You're not giving me a whole lot to go on here, and. I suppose. That's the discussion at hand is I have a path forward that I think would interest you, but Bon. I'm sorry, you cut out. What'd you say? Bon? Yes, of course. <laughs> I'm all ears. I so what, ha, sorry, this is like the DM is pausing to, to consider words, but um, she says I do not know your skill set, but I do have a related task that could serve as a trial for your team. A means of both introducing me to their skill set as well as taking the first steps in our overall mission. But I don't want to sign them up for such things without knowing that this is what they want. This is dangerous business to get involved with the Vaughn family and I don't know what you've told them of her but the closer they are the more at risk they are I can have those conversations what I'd ask is level with me what this trial is let me go back to the team have the conversation tell me how I can contact you again so you know our decision and obviously if it's not going to work out you know, the team doesn't want to do it, then I need to make a decision on my end, and I'll let you know. Or if they're here to support, let's do this trial so we can figure out what's going on. But out of it, though, I need to understand, where's your angle? What are you coming from? 
because nothing comes for free. So. She... You don't hear anything for 15 seconds. And then as you're considering sort of piping up to see if she's still there, a figure sits in front of you uh, at the booth that you're at. And you see for the first time uh, a your features are mostly hidden but she's wearing a kind of bright teal cloak um, that is sort of like currently over her over her eyes and you sort of see just like a, a pointed chin underneath um, and she this the, the voice that you're hearing from comes from from this figure it, it is her sitting in front of you and she says how familiar are you with vapor the the drug that she peddles i mean as much as any watch captain you know stuff ruin your life throwing a lot of people in jail for dealing it i mean beyond that i don't know anything else other than it's crap it's it takes many forms and she's turned it into a commodity as opposed to a sacred tradition of my people I, there are different kinds. We refer to it in its purest form as dream mist. It is a means of connecting with our ancestors, seeing what they've seen, hearing what they've heard. But the way that she has taken over or created an empire around it turns it from a ritual into a a cheap drug I would see that changed okay so you told me what you want what's the why Um, she pulls the cloak back and you see elven features, kind of like long pointed ears. Um, and she speaks and says, she betrayed our people by doing this and the elven heritage is dying more and more every day. We were the first on these lands, and they've become, we've become more and more distant from our traditions. Is it not enough to, of a why to want to destroy that? No, I just wanted to make sure we're on the up and up. And everything I'm hearing so far, uh, if you don't mind, real quick insight. Sure. Do I believe her? Do I believe her? Actually, yeah. I should ask you for can, You can roll insight. Come on, no whammies, no whammies. All right, not yeah. bad for me. Okay. Um, given the sort of like secretive nature to her, you would sort of read that her willing to show her face and become a little bit more vulnerable with you is validating. But it's also in her nature to keep some secrets. So you can't know if she's telling the whole truth, but there is some earnest, there's some earnesty in what she's doing. Well then, how do I get a hold of you after I've had a chance to talk to the team? Um, she pulls out a feather from her cloak. Uh, and then she pulls out a... A kind of like small inkwell. Um, and she says, just write to me when... 
you want to meet, and I'll be here. Go ahead and grab the, the parchment and the inkwell, or the feather and the inkwell. Um, it's clear to you as you grab it, because it's sort of like, well, where do I mail it to? But as you grab it, it sort of thrums with power, and you kind of get the impression that this is a... By writing on this, it would perhaps send a message to her. I, I made the assumption it was like uh, the book that we got for Avendir. It could be something similar, yeah. Um, she says, uh, your other question about what this trial would entail... The I spoke about different kinds of this vapor. In its purest form, there's a blue flower that comes from that comes from where these are harvested, and there is a trader in town who specializes in sort of the high-end wares and I need one of these flowers to be acquired but I also need it to be done without raising alarm this is not a uh, it's not a bust it is not a anything that would alert Miss Vaughn to an interruption in her operation would be a bad road to go down. I'm looking for a legitimate purchase or or some means of keeping her off our scent. Okay. And the name of the person? Or, in, or where I can find them? Or do you want me to talk to the team first before I get that? I would rather you talk to the team. I have an inside man who can make the connection. I don't... I've never spoken to the individual trader before. So I okay. can I can set that up if your team is willing to do it. All right. Well, I know it's getting late. I'm not sure where you're going, but I got to walk ahead of me. Buy you a drink on my way out? Like, gives a small smile that tells you all you need to know is that the answer is no I appreciate you taking this leap I know that I know that you're chasing her for your own needs and I know that I know that I ask a lot but there has been very little opportunity for me to take this on myself. And she has a quite a powerful, powerful friends, we'll say. And so I'm desperate for the help. The way I see it, you've put me on a pretty good path so far. I owe you one. And let's be honest, I get what I want out of it too. She kind of like narrows her eyes a little bit. You, you kind of, I'd say with your previous insight, you might get the impression she may not know your whole story. Mm. Okay. But nonetheless, she's she sort of nods. Uh, uh -huh. and she, she stands up to leave, but it's sort of like... I'll go out first. Okay. There's sort of like some... Saying goodbye without saying goodbye nods as as you guys split off. And begin the trek back. Oh boy. Um Team Baking. <laughs> this is going to be a skill challenge. <laughs> I'm you like, have... I'm pretty sure this could work without a star, you guys. I'm just, I'm not a great oh, baker, no, just, but... can just go outside and, like, find some mushrooms. I'm pretty good at, like, identifying which ones you can and, like, can't eat. Like, 
been doing it for a while, and like you just mash that into a paste, let that ferment for like a you, you, we'll be good, be good. Just give oh, me like twenty. Come on, come on. <laughs> secret talents. I didn't know you knew all about this. We have well, it sounds like Drada is the first in the skill challenge. We have four steps to creating the perfect sourdough starter. One is uh, gathering. <laughs> one is gathering ingredients. Two is prepping the ingredients. Three is baking. Like the the actual baking itself, and four is presentation, because we have to see what it looks like when Clax arrives. Um. So Drada, in your search for mushrooms, I don't. All right, what it, what is your? How does Drada gather ingredients for this expert? Yeah, sourdough? Drada is like hmm, yeast is like a fungus, and that's what makes a starter happen. So therefore, if I find other mushrooms, of which Drada actually does know some mushrooms that are edible, like that, uh, that, that, they're a ranger. They know what's up. Um, yeah, they're just gonna, they're gonna leave the house and walk around at night and look for any yards <laughs> and see if there are any mushrooms and growing in any yards and go, hmm, are these maybe edible? Great, we're taking them up. People don't want mushrooms in their yards. They're, they're a nifs. I'm doing people a favor. All right. Uh, give me an investigation check for investigation or survival check for mushrooms. I DM okay. know nothing about how mushrooms equal bread, so I'm curious to see how this plays out. Um, I'm literally don't. googling it right now. They don't. This is, yeah. <laughs> but it's D and D. It's, it's fantasy uh, yeah. bread. No, as I mean, we're like, yeah, as yeast we're like, is a fungus. That's true. But mm. other than that, no. Is yeast a fungus? I thought yeast was a bacteria. That's I'm not sure. Pretty hey. good. Okay. Pretty good. Okay. I mean, you tell me what you find. Yeah, I think. I like walking you around. Find the sourdough starter. I find the sourdough <laughs> starter. Just like a mason also... jar outside that just has sourdough starter in it. <laughs> Somebody's oh, windowsill. Really. Yeast is a fungus. I, yeah, yeah, it is yeah. a fungus. I... There you go. Um, do I find this fungus? No. Do I find just like normal, like whatever indigenous mushrooms may be? And am I able to successfully determine that these mushrooms will likely not poison us? Yeah. I don't think they'll make me as a pl as a person. They absolutely won't make bread, but um, they'll make it mushroomy bread. But Trotta doesn't know that, and we're just going for it. Uh, Trotta returns to Aesop's family home with quite... With a 19, I'd say almost too many. Probably too many mushrooms. You're going to have a good omelet in the morning. Okay, so like, these won't kill you. These also won't kill you, but they are related like to this other mushroom that won't kill you, but will paralyze you for two to three days. Um, and these... Honestly, they just looked really pretty. I just picked them. We shouldn't eat them. But the rest, all good. I'll take I'll take the ones that we shouldn't eat off to the side, so we do not prep them for the bread. <laughs> um, while well, I look at Mouse and Flint, I'm like, we have three more steps: uh, prepping, baking, and beautifying or yesifying. If in some some other people might say, um, do we have? Do you guys have any step y'all want to take? I'm proficient I... in a lot of tools, but none of them involve cooking. <laughs> um. Bread, I feel like I was really impressed by the different shapes and even basic decorations that they had. I really think that I could tackle the presentation part of this and truly make whatever comes out of the Cooking vessel. Beautiful. Mm. Great. Um Flint, do you wanna do you wanna prep and then I'll work on the bake? <laughs> sure. Flint will prep. Um Mouse will guide you. <laughs> yeah. So there there I will say this is like, you know, you are leading this, but your your friends are helping you. But uh, what is so between the mushrooms and th there's a, there's also like dry like other dry ingredients flour sugar 
you, you obviously water uh, as a non-dry ingredient. Um, uh, various various things that you can leverage uh, to do this, but please do tell me what you're doing. Um, let's gosh, prepping. Um, well, I think first I probably take out my alchemist supplies because I've probably got some some big. I don't know vials or test tubes or something that I can try and like make the mushrooms more like yeast. <laughs> um and uh ooh I'll uh I'll expend one of my or I guess my only slot for making my uh Eldridge cannon um and see if I can get it to like help knead the dough. Um once I've got the dough make it into a uh, glorified kitchen aid or makeshift kitchen aid mixer um and yeah try to get something concocted out of these mushrooms that is more like a yeast um and mix everything up because i think that's all you do for bread it's just combine it and knead it for a while yeah so i would say i think the this is my interpretation is that the most challenging part of this is to accelerate the the sourdough starter process because it's usually something that takes much longer. So perhaps with your alchemical tools and like the little bit of magic from your uh, Eldritch Cannon, you can you can do that in in a creative way. So perhaps this is an alchemist tool roll. With guidance. All right. Um, not honestly sure how to make an alchemist tool roll. Uh, I would say this would be yeah, sure. just just roll yeah, just rolling in. Um, yeah, this would be intelligence plus proficiency. All right, I'll roll Arcana then. Yeah, that's fine. Same thing. Hey, I am apparently amazing at making sourdough. Uh, roll guidance just cause. What if it's a big Ooh, 30? Right. Eh, you know, 29 is nothing to be ashamed <laughs> of. It's actually uh, Drada, who seems to be more familiar with the concept of a Sardo starter, um, is perhaps impressed that what comes out of your Eldritch Cannon at the end of at the end of whatever tinkering you just pulled, uh, seems to be sufficiently, uh, it has, uh, sufficiently yeasty. It, it has a lot of strings to it as you have this sort of final needed form. Here's some sourdough sorry, starter. <laughs> beautiful gluten development. That, that's the word. <laughs> there you go. Now I'll look at Mouse, I'm like, do you want to, like, make the slashes and designs in it now before you bake, or do we do it? Can you tell I haven't done this a lot, or do you do it after you bake? I'm just not <laughs> sure. It's a two-part. Oh. This is a good point. Um, yeah, so I will make some nice slash marks in it with a twig that I pull out of my hair. And, um, I will also, I have no idea why I have this prepped, but it was already prepped, so go with it. I'll cast good berry, and I'm gonna use them to put ten berries around the outside so that even if it's terrible, at least we'll be full. There you go. <laughs> um, uh, We'll say that this, whatever product comes out of this is good berry infused, but for the purposes of design, um, I'm thinking that this is probably a sleight of hand check. Easy. I want to say that you have a twig that is just sharp enough. Okay. What it, What is it that you're, what kind of design are you intending? I go... Nope, we're not by an ocean. Um, I think I would just go a little bit snowflake star shape, just like a 
nice cross with the berries in between. Okay. Um, it comes out... Well, you haven't seen how it looks when it bakes yet, but at this point, at least, it's it looks like it's going to come together. But there is still... You still have, somebody still has to get the temperature right and take it out in time. Alrighty. Um, I will create a little fire in our uh, cooking vessel, as Mouse has referred to earlier. Um, get the temperature all warmed up and make sure it's not going to die out on me during the middle of the process. Um, and I'll stick it I'm assuming it's like round shaped. I'll stick it in like one of the bowls that we have. Um, that is heat proof. <laughs> um, I'll stick it in there. Can't really tell what temperature it is because I don't know what device I could read that with. So uh, I'm just going to be watching it. Okay. <laughs> um... I feel like it might be a perception check to see how well I could tell when uh, it's supposed to be done. Uh, it's really, I mean, I don't know about that because it's sort of like you might over, like, like you might take it out too much and like the temperature control, you're like oh. taking it in, putting it out, taking it in, putting it out. I think it's sort mm -hmm. of like, um, I will say that I'm putting way too much thought into this, first of all. <laughs> so it's, it's bread. But um, go ahead and just give me a uh, an intelligence or wisdom check, we'll say. I know neither are, are that high, but... <laughs> Intelligence. I don't remember which one is better. Unless there's like something you want to add to like. I can I. You do have enhance ability. I'm yes. sort of. I'm sort of looking at your stuff. Yes. So I will use enhance ability. I'll do in. I'll do intelligence. Okay. You're pulling into the knowledge of of. The, the great minotaur bakers um go ahead and roll intelligence with, with advantage advantage okay uh oh, crap i forgot how to do it oh great okay wow 18 <laughs> um does he does he get that uh whatever bards get that they get the like plus half their proficiency <laughs> uh not on not unless it's a uh Skill check. That's why. I... Fair enough. Um, eighteen is pretty good, though. Um, around the time that you pull it out, which um, at first glance seems perfect, tell me what sort of what does it look like as you're like pulling it out at the same time as Clax is walking in. Um. What is sort of like the atmosphere of the of the room as you're like pulling out a a pretty tasty looking uh, uh, bread that is I would say the good berries good berries are a little bit magical so they probably don't like gooify as much as um, normal berries would in this instance but they are sort of like well in there and 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 sort of like nicely decorating I think the the cuts came in. Uh, reasonably well. Some of them sort of folded out in a way that you didn't expect, but um, but what is this? What is what does Clax walk into? Uh, well, the first thing that everyone notices is the smell. So the smell of fresh dough, or fresh bread, um, mixed with like I'm assuming even though they're magical berries, they still have a smell to them. So like maybe like a fresh berry smell as well. So, Clax, as soon as you open the door, that kind of, like, slams into your face. It's, like, a beautiful aroma of just warmly cooked foods. Um, and I have, like, an apron on that definitely has some, like, some spillage. Um, probably I'm using my mother's apron <laughs> while I'm doing this. But I'm, like, kind of holding the bowl 
like kind of like be like oh okay this is too hot and then i like put it down on the counter and i just kind of like poke at it see if it's still good and it's like crunchy on the outside um and i'm like clax we made bread <laughs> smells great everyone come look walk right on over so who so who made the bread all of us did group effort how come this group does not strike me as the baking group? You just went off on a mysterious voyage to who knows fucking where. You're questioning us for baking a <laughs> loaf of bread. Yep. Yep. Pretty much. Okay. There. <laughs> Unless you can open and you can tell us where you've been. Sounds good. Sounds good, guys. This I am starving, so it I'll, smells great. I'll cut into the the bread. Um, Mouse, your designs turned out really well, and the good berries added into it, ah, uh, so delicious. Like cutting into it, like taking like little bites, like taste testing it. <laughs> um, hand everyone a plate of just slice of sourdough bread. <laughs> like here you go, here you go, there you go. It's it's not quite like, you know, dessert. I would say it's it's like a a berry infused bread, but it's I'd say it's more of like a breakfast vibe almost. But it's you know breakfast for dinner is a good thing. My Wi-Fi password. <laughs> well, and good berries are filling. There you go. Yeah, it's true. I was gonna say is don't overeat. Also, I don't pick any many knees, but each berry is one hit point. Clax could use it. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna stay. <laughs> so digging in. Yeah, you just fully walked away injured. Okay. I <laughs> uh, just banged up a little. Wasn't really injured. He I held think back a little. Up a fight. He did. I was. I also. Can I eat this yet? Are we wait? Were we toasting on this before I? Toast oh. to the bread. Toast to the bread. <laughs> Toast. I'm holding up the slice of bread. <laughs> toast to the toast. <laughs> um, There's no, mush big no mushroom flavor at all. It is <sighs> very bready. Science <laughs> or magic. I'm actually pretty impressed. This is good, guys. Next oh, bite. Wait. Food's gone. Next bite. Gone. Yeah. <laughs> I think we found what guild we need to join here to start. <laughs> I think we need to make, your make a bakery. A pastry guild. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I wouldn't be opposed to that. I definitely put on a couple stones when we were uh, hitting bread every day. That's for sure, though. Oh my God, we can be their competitor. <gasps> Competition brings the best out of everybody. Feels like a space that might have a lot of a lot of people in the market already. Maybe we need something more unique. True. Maybe not. <laughs> so where were you tonight? Oh. I do want to talk to you guys. Hi, Drada. <laughs> um, so a little background. Um, I, I've obviously told you guys, you know, I had my, my issues with, with Miss Vaughn, um, didn't leave here on the best of terms. Um, but the push that led me to the Heroes Academy, um, was a contact I had only met right before I left town. And when I, uh, last night when I met up with, uh, Lieutenant Longle, um, which I don't know if you guys are necessarily aware, but Flint, I think, may or may not have been conscious for when uh, Longo came by. Um, yeah, I vaguely remember. I went and had a conversation with him, and he mentioned that this contact wanted to have a, a follow-up conversation with me. So I um, went and spoke with the person, and, and essentially, long story short, this person is does not care for the Vaughn family, specifically uh, Miss Selna, as much as I do, for 
different reasons, but not a big fan. And they're looking for some help or assistance. And I'm also looking for some help or assistance, but I want to make sure we do it as well as we can to not put Avendir in any kind of situation or trouble. So the way it has been phrased to me is there's a plan or a way to make this happen. But the fear from this contact is that the the Vaughn family has a lot of reach, has a lot of um, sway, has a lot of ability to make life miserable for a lot of people. Um, I think I probably got out of town just in time before who knows what would have happened came across me. Um, so what she's proposing is kind of a test to see what our skill set is, almost similar to what we did for Avendeer. And I wanted to come to you guys to see if this is something you guys would be willing to partake. From the sounds of it, it doesn't sound like anything too dangerous or crazy to start. It actually is not up my wheelhouse because it doesn't involve me bashing somebody's face in. So I don't really know how to handle that. But I wanted to see if if we wanted to kind of go down this path to see what, what we can do to necessarily uh, put some pressure on Miss Vaughn without directly confronting and causing a shitstorm for Avendeer. Uh, quick yeah, question: Did it, everybody's foundry yeah. crash? Okay. Yes. I'll just keep, keep playing. Um, I'll let you know if it's fixed. Keep going though. Do you? Uh, I I mean, in my time in uh, consonants, I've never really encountered the Vaughn family, but it does seem like by the way you're describing her and her close relationships that. She does have a lot of influence within the city, so it might be a little hard to do anything without her noticing. And I think that's part of the test. Like, this first trial. And then beyond that, I don't know what the plan is yet. The contact didn't want to reveal information until I had buy-in from this team. And here's the thing, if this team says no, I completely understand. Because let's be honest, this this comes down to I just want to bash the bitch's face in. Trials doesn't seem like your uh, typical lawman kind of contact. Like, yeah, I, this was so Flint. The, the lieutenant came by. He's kind of how would I word it? He keeps an ear to the ground of all kinds of people in in uh, consonants. He's not a... I don't want to say he's not on the up and up because he is on the up and up. He has the best of consonants out for it. However, he will bend rules when needed to either get information or make things happen or move things. And so how he knows his contact, I don't know. That's probably something I should have asked. Long goal, but I generally don't think that far ahead. Do I trust this person? I think I do. Does that mean it's not going to get us in trouble and be a world of hurt? Nope. Can't say that. But I mean, trouble's fine. As long as it's, you know, you know what kind of trouble we're getting into. And the first task, just so you guys know, is we're to... All right, I'm going to ask because I didn't know this. Does does anybody know about vapor? Do we make history checks? Uh, I would say of the people who can roll, it would be Flint and Aesop. Okay. So I was about to say, would that be kind of like a college drug that you see at the parties? Yeah, that, that's, one of, that's why I'm allowing you okay. to roll. <laughs> um, because Foundry's kind of uh still mess up um i'll do it on D D beyond and tell you guys what okay. kind of role history uh, history yes nine nine okay oh i'm not proficient in history that seems like a mistake uh <laughs> big seven <laughs> um i'm gonna say no no fair but it yeah, I'm just going to say no for now. All right. 
and so Ace up to tie back to your question from earlier, mm. you know, you haven't really you don't really know about the bonds or anything along those lines. It's because they they deal in circles that deal in illicit drugs. Um Ooh. vapor is is a drug that I just assume was stupid stuff that people stupid people put in their face, their body, whatever they do with it, and um cause them to be worthless pieces of crap and I've busted more than a couple heads of them and um matter of fact there's a gentleman sitting in the prison right now that hopefully will spend a very long time in there for some of the stuff he's done related to that drug trade. Um I digress. The the contact has relayed to me that it's actually a deep down poor man's version of actually a elven um I'm still going to call it a drug, but I'm going to call it, it's called Dream Mist, apparently. And this is supposedly something they use in their rituals. Um, and she is, the contact has taken severe disliking to the fact that something that is of a cultural heritage to the elves has now been dumbed down into a treat, cheap drug that idiots on the street are just using. Our task is to discreetly, which again, not my forte, get a flower that is the source of this this drug. And that's all the details I really have. She's not going to commit to anything more until I know, until she knows either I'm doing this solo or I've got a team with me. Can you run my history check on D&D Beyond Clax? Sure thing. Uh, there's history. Ooh, an 18! Okay. Mm. Um, one One standout thing that uh, one detail that you find a little bit to be new information is that she sort of called, I think, I, I think she said specifically to get a, a blue flower, mm-hmm. um, but the vapor that you see peddled on the streets tends to have a more red coloration to it. Um, Fitting. And this, so you expect that. Um, well, it's kind of just do, but with an 18, you kind of, you, you don't really know too much about the blue flower. Um, this is the first you're really hearing of it, but you do get the impression that it's, it's not like it's that the other leaves are dyed red, but that there's different like qualities almost, but the red is sort of like, has a, is being used, but it's sort of like a different purpose almost. Um, it's not like that she's dyed it or anything like that. It's that it's a, a slightly different product that she's right. looking for at the moment. But again, I don't know a lot about this flower, but different than what vapor is I've seen on the street. Not sure of all the details behind it, but I'm sure there's something special about it. So that's the task, is we have to go find a way to get a flower without causing any ruckus. We can buy it, we could do whatever, but just be discreet. Don't tie anything back to either us, because obviously Miss Vaughn knows I'm working for Avendeer. And then my contact... I don't know what she did to get this information, so even knowing this might put us at risk once we either commit or don't commit. Do you have any idea how much this flower costs? No clue. I just made the assumption that it's a flower. It can't be that much. DM smiles mischievous, mischievous. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to play his clacks, you know, trying to trying to be in character. Hi, um, I don't, I know a lot about drugs. I don't know a lot about drugs. Um, if there's a flower that an entire, an entire real drug is, potent drug is then being derived out of, that then a less potent drug is being knocked off out of. That sounds more valuable than maybe a lot of things we've come in contact with. Um, I'll give plaques a little bit more off the you said 18 history yep. before um, yep. and you can communicate this to the group as you as you see fit or not um, vapor the way that it is sort of partaken uh, by those who use it um, it is a flower that is sort of like processed like like almost milled down into a powder and then used to brew a tea um, some people drink the tea and get very sick. Um, some people with less severe, less severe psychedelic effects seem to 
just inhale the fumes coming off of the tea. Um, but that generally creates cravings for for people that eventually lead people to drink it. Um, and so the the nature of like having a intact flower, uh, it's sort of like a, like raw materials. It's it's something that is probably a little bit more treasured than like the commodified sort of like mass produced stuff, let alone the different color flower. I'm just yeah, it's it's a different color flower. People inhale this. People drink it. I I've never understood. I don't pay attention to that stuff. And if you guys need time, night to sleep on it, we can we can sleep on it and talk about it in the morning. I mean, I'm in. I just depending on how much this thing costs might uh, dictate that we don't go about getting it quite as. You know, your friend suggested. I'm not You're opposed to that. Your Jade Mouse connections? I'm sorry, Jada, what was that? Can you pull on your Jade Mouse connections? Absolutely not casually fishing for Flint to reveal <laughs> information. What are you talking about? I, I don't have that many connections. I'm not clear if they like me right now um, or if they operate in this city. Um, plus, they'd want like a cut or some payment or something. We could steal this. But wasn't that, <clears throat> excuse me, wasn't that alert that there was something wrong? Well, I mean, I think that's if, if there's anything to indicate who stole it. Well, I'm not, a, I'm not opposed to this idea either way. We're talking about drug dealers. I could care less what happens to them. I, um,. I can very briefly make someone go invisible. Um, very briefly, as in a minute. <laughs> Might be, yeah, minute. Um, so that might be in use if we're trying to steal it. Um, well, before we even get there, we need more information from my contact. Yeah. But I've given you, I believe, all the relevant information from from my meeting. This is a selfish endeavor. I'm not requiring you guys or or asking you guys to, to do this for me. But if you want to in on this, and again, I don't even think there's going to be any pay for this. Just this is completely selfish. I'm doing it either way. I mean, even if they don't pay, I mean, I'm sure... Lady Vaughn's got some sort of money that we'll eventually be able to, you know. Like her. you're thinking, Flint, going for the long <laughs> game. What's that thing that people say when, like, like, like artisans say when, like, apprentices are coming and they're like, yeah, like, it pays an experience. This is an experience. Ah, uh, an internship. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> D&D, yes. Uh, makes it cringe. <laughs> so, Drada, you're always up for mischief, so I kind of assumed I wouldn't have to ask you, but I'm I mean, assuming you're right. I've literally offered to shoot this woman without having really met her. I know. So, like, so... like, and unpack that as, as you will. But, like, right. yeah. Rod and Flint are in. Hey, sup, Mouse? I mean, it doesn't really make sense that a person could own a flower in the first place. It's a living thing. It, it's not really theirs that we'd be taking from them. As long as we're helping people, I think it's fine. All right. Hey, sup? I'm worried that if it does come down on us that somehow it will come down on my parents and their connections in the city i just don't i don't want to i don't, I at least don't want to be like the person actually like 
stealing the thing. I can help, but I'm going to try to stay away as much as I can, but I will help. Well, again, self involved. If you want, we can come back after we're done with this. You don't have to, there's no obligation. We'll just make you look different. Oh, okay. that's true. I can look different. Just if you're saying she has a lot of connections in the city, I'm just worried that it'll eventually come down on us in ways that we don't expect. Um, that is a very real possibility. Yeah. Um, I will probably be. I will help, but I will probably be disguised. That's fine. All right. Does anybody have a piece of parchment? Sure. <laughs> just I probably carry parchment everywhere I go. I'll rip one from my book. I'm like here you go. Grab like it. Little, there's like a little doodle on like the corner of the page of like a, like a little starry nightscape. I'll pull out the um, inkwell and the the feather from my pack and let's see how well this works. I stop for the inkwell and with my big hand kind of drawn. I imagine drawing almost like character, uh, not character, um, was it calligraphy. Well, you first, you, once you dip the pen in the inkwell, you notice that it starts to glow a, uh, a vibrant shade of, like, it's sort of a mixture between green and red. Um, the entire pen is glowing. Um, and as you sort of lift it, it's, uh, it has a little bit of resistance to it. Like, like, there's extra gravity as you're sort of pulling it up. It's interesting. I'm just going to write, we're in. You feel the pen pulling away from you. Like, as I'm writing or after uh, I'm done at, writing? When you're done writing. Okay. Do you let okay. go? Or do you put it, where do, what do you do with it? I'm gonna hold it for like. Is does it continue to get stronger to pull away? It's like it's yanking. <laughs> you know what? Uh, I'm gonna hold it and see where it kind of tends to lead me. Uh, go and roll an athletics check. <laughs> oh goodness! Uh, by and the way, I was able to get on the forge. Okay, great. Uh, fifteen. And you guys should be able to see my rolls if you uh, hop in there. So. Um, and I'm reloading Forge anyway. Yes, it looks like Foundry's back up. Um, you said 15? Yeah, 15. Uh, I'm going to, without rolling what I am what I have in mind, I want to say you beat it because I'm still pulling stuff up, but it seems like it's trying to, to direct itself to the paper. Oh, direct? Oh, okay. Like it's, uh, it's yanking towards the paper. <laughs> then I'll go ahead. Oh! Eh, I let go of the pen. Or the, uh, the, the feather. There, there's a there's a moment of like of in the in the midst of it yanking that it sort of was caught off guard by you letting go and it sort of flies back a little bit, but then comes back and you're sort of able to assess that the extra weight you were feeling was as perhaps almost as if you were holding two pens at once and you see uh, the pen drifts down towards a parchment um it it's a little off center uh uh but it starts to write both sort of on the table and on the parchment um in a way Sorry, so <laughs> i'm like oh god okay uh, let me get a washcloth uh, is this permanent <laughs> and it says do they want to meet with me and then the pen is sort of floating in the air grab the pen like, we all. Oh, go ahead. Like, Asa. Squeeze like a little li like lemon and kind of rub the ink off the table. <laughs> I like that. Flint's probably got like acetone in his bag, but. <laughs> 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 um, I mean, I'm not against m meeting with her, but I don't. Does that cause unnecessary, like? risk or, or something like if we're very much trying to not be too connected to this absolutely I mean, increase it because there's a chance somebody could see us tie us back you know 
if it's just me meeting, you can always say plausible deniability. It was the angry guy in our group who had a grudge. I mean, but I, also I agree. Cool. Like, why do we need accountability here? Like, we're helping people get back something that others have taken, right? I I just don't understand why we have to be quite so secretive. Mm. Unfortunately, the um, correct me if I'm wrong, Clax, but it might be the person who we're taking from in this case might have a lot of repercussions against us that we will feel later if we are caught. Exactly. And unfortunately, since my family lives here, my family might be involved with that. I think, I think if you're going to meet with her again, I would go along. But I think if she can just give us the info we need and we don't need to have another, you know, meeting at all, probably better. Okay. Drada? I mean, that feels fair. Okay. Well, give me a minute to word this. Can we get details via this means? Question mark. If not, some of the team will come with me to meet to keep group small. Like we need another paper in there. Thank yeah. you. Yes. But it, uh, judging based on where it went last time, I'll kind of. Yeah, I'm like, OK, yeah, around. let me just scooch that in there. Um, and, I, and I don't hold on to it. As soon as I'm done, I kind of let it go. So maybe it's kind of recentered now. Yeah. Um, the pen starts to drift back down to the more centered page. Ooh, my boundary is finally working, maybe. Um, and it says, uh, my contact's name, um, I'll put this in Discord for you guys, um, because boundary is still acting up. Uh, it says, Um, my contact's name is Francis, can be found near penitentiary to identify yourselves secretly, speak the words singing, singing in harmony and emerald feather. He will ask what you're shopping for. And you will respond that you heard his wares make beautiful gifts. He will set up the meeting after that, and then you're on your own. I, I should ask like, how much it costs. Yes, I'll <laughs> add another paper underneath. <laughs> I feel like that was a lot. <laughs> um, she, she continues writing, act with caution Crying eyes or lackeys might catch on and blow his cover. I would rather not lose him. What is this? Con is this the contact? I'm asking class. Is this the contact who has the flower or is this the person who will get us the flower? Yeah, sorry if I didn't clearly. Uh, I don't think I did a very good job of explaining it, actually. Um, so the contact is going to get us to where we need to be um so think of them almost as middle man well when we were in the guard we had we had our normal snitches for lack of a better term sure. like they they work both sides you know um and that's where especially like long ghost groups are really good at is they have their network of people this sounds like somebody that's in her network where they're playing both sides of the fence or playing one side while the other side thinks they're playing for them type situation so this person's going to be our our contact to be where we need to be. So we got a, a path forward. Now we need to figure out how we do it. Um, do you guys think I should respond back to her? Maybe just contact you when 
where it's, it's over when we've made contact. Uh, how about we'll follow up um, once completed. Okay. Go ahead, type or draw that out with the feather and the inkwell. Um, she writes back Bring the flower to me at the rapier, and we can move forward from there. Um, and she, you see that the pen is sort of lingering in the air for a moment to see if you have a response. But if you don't grab it, you see that it sort of returns to the inkwell, and the glowing fades. And it was stripping ink all over the table when it was doing that. All right. So I'll put the stopper, the ink well, get the feather, kind of put them, and I'll add them to my inventory as well. Um, grab the papers up. The one with the passcodes, just in case. Or I'll tear off everything except for those passcodes. That way there's no other information there just except for those passcodes. Pull that was, up. I was oh. thinking we could throw that in the fire. That exactly. is probably still embery now. Exactly. Just keep the vital piece of information, but the rest of the conversation. Destroy it. Okay. Um, you do that. Uh, All right, guys. Oh. Nope. I, I, I would just add a note to say that um, it appears that the amount of ink you've used is about three quarters of, of what was in the inkwell. So there's not a whole lot left you can communicate at this point. But there's enough to send another message. Uh, another short one, perhaps. All right. Um, I could put this in the inkwell. Because hmm. I don't want the, the lady coming into our house and cleaning up after it. What's her name again? <laughs> uh, uh, Kelby, I think. Kelby, yeah. yes. Kelby. That sounds familiar. Um, so... I'll leave it. I don't know if she goes into my room. I'll leave it in like a little uh, hidey hole in my room, like kind of under the bed, sort of sitch. The the ink well, or I, th I thought Clax was holding onto that. Oh, did you want to yeah. hold onto that? Okay. Yeah, if you don't mind, that way I can. I'll just put it in my pack and, and hold onto that. Got it. And sorry about the table. No, we're good. I, I had a lemon here, so we're good. It's it's not it's not like stain you didn't stain the table or anything here. It's fine. Well, um, it's getting late, guys. I don't know about you, but how well, spread was filling. Surprisingly, so. Any left? I want to take a moment to appreciate that we went from collectively baking bread to figuring out how to acquire drugs in the span of ten minutes. That's all. That's all. I don't think I viewed it as acquiring drugs, so thank you for that. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're totally getting drugs. Which, should we have a drink to Clax becoming an outlaw? Is that... Sure. Uh, all right, what do you got in this house? Um. Other than the wine. That's probably uh, it, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'll make everyone get everyone little cups, pour it in. Cheers, everyone, to Clax <laughs> being an outlaw. The outlaws. Did drugs. Thanks, Drada. <laughs> um, we will take that as a point to take a quick break. Um, and Foundry is working. If anybody is yes. not, a, if not, anybody's done it, but yes, take a quick break and be back in like five minutes. Sounds good. All right, we are back.
uh, we return. So you have all toasted to some more of the wine that is in Aesop's family cellar. Um, I imagine that just, you know, I don't think they are hoarding wine. So I will just say like, you're going through their stores. And so we, should, you no. choose to, should you choose to restock at some point, you might uh, choose to do that. But, um, but for the time being, uh, it is past midnight and you know, you, you all know that. And uh, I assume people are looking to rest soon. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Are we, uh, are we doing watches? Um, I'm not first I, as a DM, I'm not yeah. suggesting that you have to. I am just sort of like giving you the opportunity before I assume you're not. I'll stay up for the first one. I'm going to say, I think Clax, now that he's had the conversation long ago and long ago, knows we're camping out here. I, I think we're probably okay without a watch. So it's up to you guys. But I'm going to kind of rest it off because, you know. That old man could move. <laughs> yeah, I feel fine as of now. Maybe <laughs> after some th things happen, things change. But for now, whatever. Yeah, I don't think anybody's after us or anything yet. So probably fine with that one. Then I will bid y'all adieu. Um, I will sleep in my room. All right. Uh, you all complete a long rest. Um, but before you do that, Mouse, could you roll me a wisdom saving throw? Yes. I was going to say, I think Flint maybe spends a little bit too much time staring out the window trying to find this uh, star that's going to make him fall asleep. He has uh -huh. no idea what he's looking for. Mouse, you have dreams of songs uh sort of like ambient music as a sort of like crashing waves are are hitting the edge of your consciousness as you're sleeping but um but you, you sleep in like maybe 20 minutes nothing too uh you, you did not succumb to the lulling effect of the Sapphire Serenade too much. Drama. But it is sort of like a strange like admission to that there's there's something to the fables of the stars, even if uh, even if they aren't quite how they've been just like even if what's been described to you is not totally accurate. Maybe it's all in your head, but there was a you know, so, something happened last night. <laughs> common is the sound of crashing waves like is that something she's heard before um i would say hmm that's a good point uh, you tell me are there any kind of like lakes back at home it lakes for sure i i Honestly, as because I almost referenced waves earlier in this session and stopped myself because I was like, oh, right, there aren't oceans. Yeah, I would say crashing waves, not so much, but uh, certainly the sound of like moving water is, is familiar to you. Dangerously curious. Like, come on now, she just, in her head, had a, like, touch with the stars. These things she's kind of revered and respected forever and whether it's real or not she's curious if it's out again tonight she's probably gonna have another look okay but you know I, I would say that mouse didn't sleep in enough for anybody to really notice but you all do sort of like rendezvous uh, in the living room that morning uh having completed your long rest, and uh, what would you like to do? I'd say there's still, there's still a good... I, I would say the, the loaf of bread you made, there's probably some morning leftovers. Uh, I'll put on my mother's apron just to 
don't know. Because I'm I miss my parents. Um, kind of has like that like smell to her. Um, and I'll cut more slices off the loaf. I'll probably finish the loaf at this point uh, for eating it for breakfast and uh, give everyone plates again. Thank you very much. Yep. That's good. That was, is uh, good berries. That's just one hit point. It's not one temp hit point, right? Correct. Yes. All right. The lifesaver. If we hadn't just long rested and all have full hit points anyway. <laughs> That's why I was asking for this temp hit points. Fine. So, do we have any any schemes for the day? No, I think for today it's. Do we want to do any other shopping? Do we want to get anything going on? Do we go check out anything more with the uh, rescue squad? Mm. Um, I don't know if there's going to be any more updates um, in terms of like recovery squad business. It was interesting, interestingly enough, he was pretty, has, pretty hesitant to even talk to me about those things anyway, even though they're my parents. <laughs> um, I don't think we're going to find anything out anytime soon. Question for the collective. I have this lovely letter of introduction from Avendir to go meet Captain Willow on the Asher Phoenix. Who do we want to do that? What would be the, the just like introductions would be the goal or is there like an actual like thing we need to talk about with them? In all candor, out of character, it's been a hot moment and I'm struggling <laughs> to remember. I think Avenger just recommended we go, you know, introduce ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes. I will say there's, um... There's, there's me specific things, but... Yeah, I mean, the Avenger's letter was that Captain Willow should introduce the crew to, like, the newest partners. Um, let me copy-paste it in the chat. Um, that is sort of like as far as it has been presented to you. That is definitely something we could do today. I feel like we have. I'll say. I'll say. Uh, uh, this is this is a letter that's in Drada's possession at the moment. And uh, go ahead and roll me an intelligence check. Oops. Uh, Dr Drada. Okay. Okay. This is not. This letter has not been necessarily read to you, uh, read to everybody else. This was handed to Drada. Uh, no, just looks like a nice old, good, friendly letter. <laughs> hey. Yeah. So I mean, I, I might head on over to the Azure Phoenix at some point today or in the coming days if anyone wants to join. I guess. Okay. Um, we get some random meetings and errands and whatever out of the way like that and there was some talk about uh whatever the guild organization is meeting with them potentially um guild association might be might sounds like it might be up your alley flint i mean <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know what we want our guild to be yet. That's true. Um, if it's baking, I... I establish this. Yes, exactly. Only sourdough pastries. <laughs> Anyone has a fungus allergy, I'm so sorry. We'll have a sign at the door. <laughs> yeah, also, yeah, if we're on... I don't know if this is an errand or if this is just... You know, Flynn, I have a question for you. How did you? How did you acquire your your your, your little fuse tool kit right over there in your bag for no reason? I'm not asking for any reason in particular. Ah, um, uh, is that like something you can just 
buy, or did you assemble that over time? Slash, if you wanted to make me one, that'd be really cool. I yeah, I was just trying to decide if I thought Flint bought this or made it. Um, yeah, I mean, probably with, with the right tool for the job, which is your your skill, you can just like, yeah. create sort of anything that you want, it's tools not... wise. Yeah, it's, it, that ability is confusing to me. Like, I assume I can't just make an infinite amount of Thebes tools. No, I, I kind of see um, it as like a multi-tool. Like, you have a yeah. multi-tool that you can configure to be different tools. Um, but, yeah, I I mean, I made this one, but I, I think you can just buy them or I could probably make another set. Um, granted, I, yeah, I don't think you can just pop down to a regular store. Yeah, that, that, that was my, my um, we can probably like work on assembling you one of some sort that would be really really great I love that and appreciate that a whole lot I bet those tabaxis know where you can get one yeah, they were really nice right so like I think it would be really smart to just kind of like go up and ask them Hmm. That doesn't feel like um, at all. <laughs> They're nice to me. Yeah, you guys strike me as uh, violent criminals. Violent. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, we can keep an eye out for some shops and, and ask around and and things. Or, I mean, we're probably going to buy a ton of metal at some point to make collect some armor. So. We can probably just make one. How hard can it be? In in honor and a privilege to break into locations that are yet to be specified with a tool made by your hands. <laughs> we can make bread. We can make anything. Exactly. Well, true. honestly, true. All right. Blacks, no, honestly, Blacks, no. This is a positive session right now. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, I was I plan on um eventually doesn't have to be today, but um, you know, meet up with some of my old college friends. Um I haven't seen all of them. Well, I haven't seen most of them since I've been in town or the city. I don't act actually know if they're still here, but it doesn't hurt to try to look in for them. So ace up. Yes. Since we want to make sure we have a, the appearance of distance mm. for you. Why don't you and whoever wants to go with you go meet up with some friends and me and whoever wants to go with me can go scout out the penitentiary. See if we can get a just lay of the land before we attempt to meet and see if there's identifying people who are lurking, keeping an eye out. You know, just casual like, but kind of scout out early in the day. See what's around. So in case... People Plus, then you have, yep. yeah. Plus, then you have an alibi. If anything goes wrong, you're with friends. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't hate this plan, um, but at this point, like, if I think if any of us get caught, it's probably not a far stretch to associate the entirety of our group. No. I'll, I'll say just for, well somebody give me a I'll say two people can give me a wisdom check because we've had so many breaks in the game I just want to sort of share some DM insight on the situation I prefer somebody other yeah I prefer Here. somebody other than me take a wisdom check yeah you got this mouse hey. um hey. yeah we'll take that uh it's up to you to decide how to communicate this with Mouse. Um, I would say... If your friends have a fear of association, your... your familiarity with this woman that they keep talking about um, is very, very scarce, which probably implies that she's very scarcely aware of you. The situation that you saw her, she her direct contact was with Clax and with Aesop. 
everybody else was sort of like on the wings at the same table, perhaps. But when you think about familiarity insofar as like your your starry sending and sort of like what it means to be familiar with somebody on, on the cosmic scale, we'll say um, the only people who you think she would perhaps recognize in that way would be the, those two. I mean, our, I think if our goal is to prevent this from coming back on, really, Aesop, or Plax's contact, I think maybe those of us who she's less familiar with should perhaps be more involved and take the lead. I'm not sure that I mean, Drada can more or less become invisible, and I'm not sure that either Blinks or I would get tied back to uh, Flint. <laughs> See, I'm not the only one. Not the only one. I don't even know what I said. Uh, get tied Blinks. back to this as a group. Yeah. It's not, not a bad a... idea. Actually, I kind of really like the idea also be other things which can be kind of useful well and like you're you're pretty hard to miss in a crowd well you and Aesop really <laughs> it's true it's blend in a little better so kind of reach around pull out the the passcodes and everything Draw a flint? Mouse? Is this in your world? Is it just Drada because he could be so stealthy at night? Is it Mouse because she Drada and Mouse because the Mouse can be a mouse somewhere or a badger? I think you were one time a mouse badger. I mean, times I end up regardless. I mean, I think the three of us can probably go and have a chat with this person, figure out where we need to go and who we need to talk to about a flower. All right. The, the implication you get is that if you go through the inside man, that you're going to have a meeting set up for you. I just so think it's, to be clear on that. Yeah. I think it's just a question of like, are we comfortable not having the whole group there in case things get a little questionable or, and, or, are you comfortable not being there depending on what sort of conversations are had? I know you're the the most The conversations don't bother me. There's there's nothing no conversation that I'm worried about or anything along those lines. It's more if something goes south I don't mean to be rude, but y'all squishy. Um, well, Flint, Flint, you're a little hard to hit, but <laughs> Yeah. So I feel like if things were to go wrong, Clax, you and I could possibly stay from a distance and just kind of try to blend in and kind of watch from afar. And if things go bad, I could teleport us in there. There we go. Sounds like or we got a plan. Be better if you all were off somewhere else making a different kind of ruckus so that if things do go south, you have very clearly been seen not there. Not that I don't want you guys nearby to come to our rescue. I just don't think we're going to need rescue. Lisa, do we have a way to communicate with, with the rest of them? If we were to go look up your college buddies and go bar hopping? I don't think they would be opposed. Um... But I do not have a way of contacting them. Uh, uh, them as in the rest of our group. Yep. Hey, Is that... Go ahead, Flint. I was just going to say, I don't hate the idea of, of you guys being near by, um, but not, like, right there with us in case you need to teleport in or something. And find a... We'll go bar hop and end up in a bar, you know? two storefronts down. Well, I don't... Just from my recollection, near the penitentiary, there's not a 
lot of. I don't know how this bars. city is laid out. And we're probably going to be in another district, unfortunately. So it's either we're close by but at a distance, or we are elsewhere creating the appearance that we are not involved because the two people that are the most visible in this group are Ace up and myself, especially to the Vaughn family. Tonight matters less than the actual meeting. I don't think anything's going to go wrong today. I agree, but what happens if the meeting's right from there? You know, that's that's the the crux of it. Is the meeting is right now? Like they lead you down a back alleyway to meet or not meet? And again, I, I generally trust my contact, but ah, uh, so it feels, it feels important you at least be there for the conversation before the conversation, if that makes sense. And yeah, you may be the most visible, so to speak, but... Now we're coming back the other way. Do, do I just go alone for this meet? Get the information? I... More and more, I feel like maybe we should just all go as a group. All right. I... I worry we could get ourselves into quite a bit of trouble if we split up. I can at least disguise myself. I just can't disguise you, Clax. Yeah. I think a bunch of us can actually disguise ourselves. I mean, it might Clax, just be Clax. Clax, I mean, take this cloak at the least. I can turn Clax into something else. For an hour. Oh. Can't talk, but I can disguise. Um, I, w uh, I will say that the polymorph spell does not transfer their in uh, intelligence based statistics. <laughs> <laughs> <It's not. laughs> so just, okay, just making sure you're, <laughs> make sure you're aware of how I plan to rule it. <laughs> Yeah, so you could be a, a really, really cool lizard with a nice cloak. Already a really cool wizard or lizard. I just don't a have a cloak. really cool horse. I don't know. I don't know what animal. I feel like just a dog. us. I feel us like it's with not a horse behind us. <laughs> it's not weird for somebody to have a dog with them. That's um, the animal but... I should have said. Yeah. <laughs> this is totally not a Trojan horse. What are you talking about? And now Troy is canon in Ventus, and that's <laughs> delightful. <laughs> oh. But yeah, we have, regardless, like, there are means of making you completely look not like yourself, or give you a layer of visual armor, so to speak. Yeah. I'm game for all the options, but I, I think I lean towards going as a group. I think I do too. Alright, then. Do we want to scout it out during the day? Or do we just go on over and wing it when we get there? I mean... Do you think there's going to be people watching during the day? The area? Uh, Clax, roll me an intelligence, or uh, we'll say history check if it matters. Okay, uh, I don't think it does for me. Uh, let me just double check. Nope, but so we'll just roll. 13. I feel like that's like the fourth 13 you've rolled today. I um, believe it is. It's been pretty consistent. Um, what I would say with your time on the edge, uh, you know that it's sort of like as a like when vapor is being sold there's regardless to who's on watch the issue with the edge is that it's that things are you can't police it all and so it's sort of like you know 
you expect that business is happening during the day and during the night in this sort of situation. You're not really sure what it means as far as dealing with the, like dealing with a higher end trader through a middleman or anything like that. But you do know that like investigating to find this Francis person that they would probably be out during the day. Well, they are a trader like, or if our contact's a trader in the, or in the trade business, they're probably out trying to make money now. So might as well be as inconspicuous as a group of five people walking through the city can be. Let's go now. Sorry, Ace up. We can hopefully grab a beer later tonight. Yeah. Sounds Everybody good. good going together? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can see. I did talk like Omen and give Drod a gift of alacrity. Amazing. I give Aesop the cloak just in case Aesop decides, you know, you might want to not be the most visible during this interaction. Clax or Aesop? Um, so I would give it to Clax because I can just disguise my clothing. So. Oh, yeah, that's ignore me. Yeah, Clax, you're, you're getting the cloak of very fun illusions if you so want it. That's not its name, but. Good thing. Forgive me, I don't recall how... That, do I have to attune and I don't recall no, how... No, it is... No, it's just you can make it look like whatever you want it to look like as yeah. long as it's a reasonable article. Yeah, you kind of just imagine so. it. Um, I will say that it, it sort of like is bound by sort of standard dimensions. You can't like... Uh, you're not really going to have an easy time masking the fact that you're a dragonborn with it. You're just going to be like have an outer layer that hides your armor in a different way. Gotcha. I'll think on that while we're walking over. Last question. You found the flower without the meeting. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? How would we find it without the meeting? I mean, I don't know if it would work, but I was looking at the stars last night. I think I have a thing that could locate plants. Is there, like, a certain radius that you have to be within it? Like, how close you need to be to the certain object to pinpoint it? I just have to describe or name the specific kind of plant and then let nature tell me where within five miles the closest plant of that kind is. Living plant or plucked plant? I assume living, but I guess that's fair. If it's a... I don't know if it works on dead plants. I haven't tried this before. Wait, are we stealing a live flower or a dead flower? I do not know. I'm just assuming from a transportation standpoint, it's probably easier to move a a dead flower. However, a live flower, though, is, you know, I don't know how this dream mist works. Maybe, maybe it has to be live. I, I, I honestly don't know, Mouse. I have no clue. I don't think it's a terrible idea to try. Yeah, I actually think it's a great idea if we can bypass all that together. It'll take three minutes and let... Actually, it's a ritual. I'm going to take three minutes to let Clax tell me everything he knows about this flower. And then I'm going to take ten minutes to guess. Locate plant. I, it would take Clax three seconds to describe what little information he has. <laughs> and and you and before you waste the ten minutes, Mouse, you would probably know that blue flower is not a uh, specific enough description, probably. Try. Name it. <laughs> The dream, what was it called? Dream, dream, mist. dream mist. Dream mist. But I don't know if that's the name of the flower, just the uh, the ritual item. Yeah. yeah. It's a blue flower. So if anybody happens to know what the flower is that they use to make vapor, it's a blue version of that. Uh, people failed on their vapor history checks earlier, so I'm going to say no. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, you would need to, you need to get more information. Oh well, that it may not work. <laughs> so, 
But I like I like the idea that Mount Saw we're right near an academy. Is there a library that we could access where there might be sketchings, drawings? Is there a herbalist in town that would know what this stuff is? Maybe maybe an herbalist has a version of it that we're that we could leverage. Because we got all day. I mean, let's... There's a library. You need to talk with no more. Um, yes, and I Love do idea, actually... Mouth. I do actually know... Totally not an excuse to go see him or anything, but I, I do have a contact in the uh, the university archives. Oh my god. Uh, I could go see him. No. Yeah. no, no, no. Just, no, yeah, normal, normal relationship, yeah. That's crazy. Mm, mm-hmm. I totally forgot um, Jory was in this town. Uh-huh. Yep. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Try that first. Okay. I'll, do the... <laughs> I'll just go ask um, I'll just go ask him what he knows about that uh, the drugs. Totally normal conversation to have. Yeah. It'd be great. Definitely not, not going to change what he thinks about you at all. Oh, yeah. Don't. Yeah. I now don't have that in my mind. Totally. Absolutely. <sighs> I'm now wondering what are all the potential uses for this uh, flower are. Well, hopefully we'll find out more. <laughs> Thank you so much for offering that information. That was so generous. Of you. I, mm-hmm. I so hope it's like the ingredient in a love potion or something. Uh-huh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, is it hot in here? Is it, the, is it from the steam from the bread last night? What? What? <laughs> Shit, is that a fungal rash? <laughs> Where? Where? <laughs> And to the academy. <laughs> All right, so we're going to the university to do some research on this flower, so that Mouse can maybe locate it. It's gonna be like two seconds to like tidy up myself, and I'll like run into my room. <laughs> <laughs> What's he all about? I mean. Really? I think he's got a thing for Jory. The guy we met? Yeah. Oh, I missed that. The one that he kissed upon, you know, in a virtual reality almost perishing? No. Oh, on, on the screen we saw. Sorry, I was really watching the the dream version of me in golf and fire wrecking shit up. I was, <laughs> that looked like a lot of fun. That, I could see that. Some of us saw a, you know, a love, a love film, and and Clax is watching the action movie. Uh, well, um, you prepare yourselves, and you're just heading straight for the archives. Is everybody going, or is are folks um, splitting up to do other things, or? Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, you don't have to come. No, I, I mean, I was pondering going back to the library anyway, so, like, just, I'm really happy to come with you. Mouse, I don't think your mic turned on for what you said. Too much lately. We might as well all stick together. Couldn't agree more. Great. Mm-hmm. Okay. Amazing. Um, you finish the loaf of bread. Just let that be known. Oh, and so you sad. are satiated for mm. the good berry. Um, and you walk over to the archives. Um, yes. The, uh, it is sort of like the time of morning that first period is sort of getting in. Uh, but you know that that is not necessarily a um, problem insofar as being able to request access to the to the archives um that is it's sort of a building that is set aside from the main campus um for for those besides you who would know because you tried to come in here and drop off a message earlier but um you find again this building that uh that is like reasonably fortified uh, not in the army or war sense but in the sense that the only way 
like past the front desk is to get through this stubborn goblin looking man mm. <laughs> who seems to be a little bit grumpy and seems sees you all sort of walking in, I assume with Aesop in front. And he just sort of like looks at you expectedly. Good morning. Uh, we're here to continue our research um, with fellow archivist uh, Jory, Jory Maglin, um, kind of researching on elvish histories uh, and like ritual practices and um, just continuing our uh, research purposes today. If we can go through. Do you have an appointment? Um, unfortunately not. It was a last minute thing. Um, we found some he, information. He pushes, that we a, to... he pushes a book in front of you and says, you can sign up. Thank you. Uh, right, well, you, well you, you look at it. It's not a, you look at it and it's not a guest book. It's not a sign in sheet. It's a, it's an appointment request form. <laughs> you need an appointment just to use the library? It gets full. Hmm. Can't have too many people in there. Things will get lost. Sure. Um, okay. Um, when would be the soonest appointment we can make? As I'm like kind of filling out names and stuff. I start just like casually rolling a couple of gold coins in my hand as he asks this question. Um, I start looking for... I know there's only one door, but I'm thinking, were there any windows on the outside of the building? Or any other means of getting in? No, this place is... Um, uh, this place is fortified in several ways, and and you imagine that, like, a, I, I don't know if you as a you as a player are familiar with like archival ink and like the the idea of, like keeping books from decaying uh, over long periods of time. But this is, the impression you get from this uh, from this building is that there's there's probably some like old stuff in here. And that it's very protected from the from both people and from the elements. And that's and so like windows letting in natural light would be a problem um, for some sorts some sorts of things that might be in here. Um, but as he's sort of looking at you and says, uh, you ask him about scheduling opportunities. He says, "Are you a student?" Uh, alum alumni, yes. Uh, you're going to have to put in a request with the Dean then. This is for sort of approved research purposes only to come in here. Interesting. All right. Well, thought I would have more benefits as an alumni, but I guess not. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. He, he is, he sees, seems unfazed. <laughs> he probably gets this all the time. He gets this all the time. <laughs> People trying to come in. And he, he pulls the book back before you finish writing. In it. Um, How far away is the front door to pass the point of the front desk? Uh, probably like a good 20 feet or so. Okay. Uh, the front desk sort of has like... Kind of like a bar. I, I don't know what the term, like those half doors that sort of swing in. Sort of like to get past the front desk, you either have to leap over the desk or go through this like swinging half door to get to the doors behind it. Um, and between between the back of the front desk and the doors, there's um, a variety of like sort of shelves and and cabinets and things like that 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 have like um, either writing materials or instruments or or papers and books and and probably the more administrative sort of stuff um but behind behind him about a good 10 feet is is like a locked door or, or what you would presume to be a locked door hey so are you jury's inside um well i'm he told me he works here um i was hoping i could connect with him today but we need to make an appointment uh you can leave a message. Um, okay. Um, do you have a paper that I could borrow or use? <laughs> this, this like, 
kind of asshole goblin just like rolls his eyes and like <laughs> goes to reach under the desk and puts like a small piece of parchment in front of you. All right, on the paper. Uh, um, hi, Dory. It's Aesop. Urgent request to get into archives. Um, please. Reach out to my family home when you get this. Great. Here you go. Um, you hand it to him and Flint, he, he sort of like, he takes it and then he's sort of like looking at you. <laughs> go to roll persuasion though. Uh, We'll say Flint can roll with advantage. This is not an Aesop roll. Oh, great. Almost one. All right. Ooh, a lot better. You know, you, you see a, a look of interest in this goblin's eyes at what you're flashing, Flint. I will casually set down, I don't know what a normal, I guess like five gold on the table. Uh, he takes it and says, you know, I could probably just get this to Jory right now. I'm not busy. That would be wonderful. Yeah, Thank I'll, you so much. I'll, I'll be back. I look at Drada just as a possibility. Like, um, <laughs> then go to the door right now. I well, guide you. I mean, you're not invisible in here. It's sort of like <laughs> you do some like acrobatic shit to get in behind this goblin. I will say. I mean, I think if he goes behind the door, I think I would go behind. Like if he and shuts the door behind him, I think I would go up to the door and like just to get the door, see if it is lock pickable. Um, yeah, I mean, or, we'll, we'll say then if that's what you're, you're what you're aiming to do. We'll start first. Is that? He takes like a set of keys from that was sort of jingling on his side um, and unlocks the door for sort of stepping in and kind of quickly closing it behind him. Not like a not paranoid closure, but sort of like he just doesn't let it linger open. And you hear the sound of locking behind him as he Is disappears from view. Uh, you only hear one lock. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, did, are you hopping? Like, you hear all this before you even have to hop the, hop the desk. Um, I would hop the desk and give a closer look to it, and then very quickly hop back. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it looks. I mean, you can roll an no, investigation check. Constitution check. Uh, investigation. Oh, okay. I was about to be like, oh god, what? Um... I could turn someone invisible, um, or I could just go invisible and with, when the doors open, just zzz. Uh Just giving a quick glance. I mean, it, it looks pickable. It doesn't look trapped or anything. Um, for the 13, that's probably all you can really get, just at a quick glance. Cool. I mean, if you guys want me to try to pick this, I can, but I feel like we've already got an in, so maybe it's a bad, bad choice. I think so. I, I, I think this is a, this if we ever need to return, we go that route, but for okay. now, we just take what we got. Okay. Um, you pause for three minutes, four minutes. Uh, eventually, you hear the sound of the door being unlocked, and goblin sort of like opens the door um and holds it open and says uh you points pointing at aesop and says you can come in oh i'll look at the rest of the group i'm like hey, know what to do i'll be back guys i'll just kind of like awkwardly like knowing that i'm gonna see him like I'm like slightly blushing, just kind of like, okay, breathing exercises. Ooh, okay. 
uh, you walk past. He, he holds the door uh, open for you, and then he just sort of says, like, end of the hall, take a left, s- s- second room on the right. Thank you. And then he just sort of, like, nods and then comes back to the front desk. Um, and what you sort of, like, as the door closes behind you, and you and you hear the sound of it locking behind you as well, um, you see uh, this... You tell me, have you been to the archives before? Um, I probably have with Dr. Jubal. I probably have went with him on, like, showing me, like, ancient magic books. On, like, how to, like, books on how to incorporate magic into my studies. Um, so I, and since he was an ancient, ancient histories kind of professor, I imagined he probably had a lot of fun. (laughs) showing me all around yeah but yeah i I would say though it was definitely always supervised and guided Mm -hmm. you've never had like a permission slip to sort of have open correct um, open throughout here so but what you see is a uh what sort of starts as all as a you know continuation of the same architecture you saw on the outside is that there's not this is a, a series of hallways that are sort of like flat stone and um there are a few like magical, uh, soft glowing lights, uh, magical in the sense that they're like like ever burning, but they're not sort of like hot fire, um, that are helping to guide people down the hallway. But um, but it is very, uh, it is very characteristically bare, for lack of, a, lack of a better way to describe it, uh, is that this hallway is not like a museum of any kind. It's it's function. Um, and you follow the directions that were set out, and uh, you see a room that, or you see it, you see the door that you were directed to. I'll, uh, um, I'll open it. Be like, knock, knock. It's me. Uh, there's no answer. Oh. Okay, so I'll knock and kind of wait a few seconds and then see if it's open or not. Uh, you jiggle the handle and it it opens uh, and you sort of enter a what seems to be like almost like like a, a library in and of itself this is a, a multi-storied sort of like large room that has probably thousands of books um, sort of that are visible from the center of the room and it, almost like an atrium around um, and nobody was waiting for you at the door, but as soon as the door swings open, uh, you look at one of the upper levels um, that sort of uh, has its own rows of bookcases, and uh, there's a blue-skinned man sort of like standing on a ladder, pulling a book from a shelf, and um, looks down at you and smiles. So that's hey. pretty that's pretty far up. Uh, are you are you are you careful? Are you are you being safe? <laughs> yes, uh, of course. Um, he jumps off, oh, God. Um, and then starts sort of drifting to the ground. Okay. Uh, like a like, it's sort of a something that you've seen him do before, and he's probably mentioned it before. But like like a an air genasi sort of has an innate feather fall um, ability. And he sort of drifts down. Uh, uh, it's just nothing that he can use infinitely or anything. But um, and he says, "I didn't expect to see you." Um, God, I forget you can do that. Duh, that terrified me. And I'll just like go in for like a small hug. Be like, "How are you?" Uh, he he returns it. Um, and just says, oh, "It's it's good. It's." It's only been a few weeks, um, but no, I'm just keeping busy. Uh, he says this like while sort of like in your chest, uh, and then, but you know, go ahead and give me an inside check. Okay, because I know that you really want to. Yeah, what is he feeling? No, <laughs> no idea. The nerves are the nerves are high, but I haven't I, seen him in a while. You you do wreck because there was one particular thing that you'd called out last session that you were like tired of the side hugs and this was a full chest hug Hmm. um and you do recognize that 
for what it's worth. Right. Uh, but he, he pulls away after like a respectable amount of time. And, and uh, I'm sorry, what did you, what did you as a player say that was the last thing you said to him? Oh, um, I don't remember, but okay. I will follow with, do you need help putting these books down or somewhere? Oh. They look pretty heavy. No, no, it's fine. Uh, okay. I just, uh, yeah, I can take a bit of a break. What's up? Uh, um, what brings you in town? Okay, so we need to find a little bit of information on um, Dr Dream Mist, it's a blue flower um, used in elven rituals and practices and cultures. Um, unfortunately, um, and I know this is going to sound crazy, but I, you've probably heard of Vapor before, I'm assuming kind of known in the city at least heard of it maybe i don't have a character sheet for him but i'm just rolling a 20. he, he has a look on his face like he's he's like uh no. no you probably you probably seen students on it at the parties we used to go to but um unfortunately the flower can be turned into that kind of drug and we're kind of figuring out trying to find out more about the source which is just like something called dream mist we as in you and the people yeah. I met back yeah okay mm -hmm. uh sure um yeah i can i can help with that hey um i'm sorry it's last minute um we were just kind of tasked last minute to finding out this information so i thought you'd be the best of us and i also wanted to see you sure well i i'm glad to see you as always uh uh, so s I can definitely help you with that. I do. It's sort of like, you know, um, regardless of what you're asking for, there has to be a little bit of a record on who's looking at what here. Sure. So, uh, what should I be sort of like, he says, he, he walks over to a side table and here you see something along the line, more more along the lines of like a, a a record book over who's checking out what book and stuff like that, and um, he looks down on it and, and says like I can, um, you know I don't think anybody really looks at these things anyway, but uh, but could we possibly put in there just me checking out books on Elvish history and culture? Sure. Um, you might take a little bit. Uh, I don't know if you know how things work around here. The the more vague you are, the longer it's going to take. But we can certainly make Ooh. it happen. Okay. Um, we. Uh, I think well, to, together we'll figure it out. I okay. Think. I was about to say maybe we can narrow it down to like Elvish rituals uh, okay. within their culture. Sure. Sure. Let's let's try that. Okay. Um, you see that he takes. Uh, there's sort of like a locked box next to this book um and he takes a key that he has and and unlocks it and you see like a wand inside the box um i'd say give me a uh history check to sort of you you may have seen dr Drupal using this in the past okay you, you don't know exactly how it works but you know that they have a cataloging like a magical catalog system of sorts that um like books are tagged in some way and that dr Drupal has used this like used this wand or a wand like it to sort of locate categories within the archives uh, uh -huh. so that, that's what jory was hinting at to, like more specific more specific could narrow down specific books but um less specific could narrow down several books you know um, but he, you see him put the wand within the spine of the book and sort of like hooks it in almost, uh, and then writes, uh, at first he writes his name, um, and then he writes down like Elvish rituals and you see that, uh, the wand lights up a little bit. Um, and he said, and he pulls it off, off of the book and says, uh, let's go take a look. Great. Um, go and roll me investigation check with advantage. Come on, come on. 
Um, I think this causes it to do twice, so I will just do that. <laughs> Better than What's a one. Uh, yeah, no, it was, it was a nine and a three. Um, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. It rolled it twice. But... So you yeah. you will be able to find more information, but what you discover is that um, I was pretty vague. I'm yeah, like, you, yeah. Well, it's it's the books were identified through the use of this wand, but it's pouring through the books to find the information that you want. You quickly realize that, you know reading a thousand pages of stuff to identify a flower is not an easy task right so you can spend the time but i'm just letting you that that is sort of what you're up against in this moment and you know your friends are waiting outside so yeah so as jory pulls the books off the shelves how do you sort of before you start getting into reading what do you sort of like what do you do with that information repeat repeat that so we're oh. like in the process of like going through the books yeah, well no so jory has pulled the books off the shelves and and what you see is like a stack of five books that are a total of a thousand pages or so and you know that it, he, jory gives you confidence that the answer if it's here it's in one of these books right but you just know that you know it's going to take at least five six seven hours um in order to sort of pursue this. Okay. Um, so you, you haven't invested that time yet. So I'm sort of start giving you the option to sort of do what you will when you see the mountain in front of you. Okay. So I don't know if this will help. I'll first categorize everything based on um, what I'm assuming uh, to be Ventus only. Cause I don't want to learn about possibly other Elvish civilizations on other islands. If there were any kind of those books are out if there are any um and then i'll narrow down specifically to um oh god <sighs> i guess sorry i might be unclear are you knowing oh. that it's going to take a long time do you just get started or like knowing that your friends are just kind of sort of like sitting outside <laughs> um i'll probably ask well okay i'll ask story could is it possible and not damage worthy to you for me to come back? Just like 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 tomorrow or or I mean yeah I can get you in. Um, I yeah. just can't take any of these books home with me, can I? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, Huh. Okay. Can I quickly go talk to my friends? Let them know that this might take a while to search through? Sure. Of course. Um, um. Yeah, I can. L l let me walk you out and he'll. Okay. I'm sorry. I just. This was like thrown at us kind of last minute. I'm kind of stressed about it. Um, no, it's it's okay. I. Yeah. He, he has a he has a voice of like trying to be reassuring but also like he has no right. idea what's going on right um I just appreciate your help and willingness to help of course um yeah I wish I I wish I could do more but uh, I I will say I I kind of have to supervise you and I I don't know how helpful I'll be because I have some other some of my own stuff to do but you know we can hang out and do a good old study session. What time is it, DM, at this point? Uh, it's like nine in the morning. Okay. It's pretty early. Um, so I'll make it out to the group. Um, and I'll just... I... Well, okay. Seeing how it's, the goblin is also there? <laughs> no, I mean, it's sort of like you, you are you are allowed to come out. Um, and you're... You, you've been given assurances that... that you're allowed to kind of come and go for this visit. Okay. Um, hey, uh, it's going to take a few hours to kind of get through all the information we need to learn about it. Um, Cause kind of a, kind of a vague category uh, when diving into it, but maybe y'all could try a different avenue. 
of finding out more information? How long is a few hours? Like a couple hours, three hours, five, seven hours, five, ten? Five to seven. Hmm. <laughs> so like a day. I mean, we could go check up on the, you know, the guild thing and maybe try and buy some metal and, and whatever. And then if, you know, we don't find anything in the books, follow up with the other contact later this evening. We can all... Not a bad idea. That gives you, oh my gosh, a full day. Alone. <sighs> oh, full day, yep. Totally mm -hmm. full day. Mm -hmm. Don't know how you're going to finish that, but yes, full day of just research and studying hard. Researching. Yes. Um, also, like, I'm like, I'm game for this. Also, like, I don't know if there's any way you could uh, hook me up with access to this archive, but there are, like, things I would love to research, and I'm just making that ask now, and I don't know if it's feasible, but that's all. Okay. Uh, we'll we'll uh, come back and set another, uh, do another appointment. I'll ask Stray when he's free again. Okay. Um, so you you're allowed back in. The study commences. Um, I'll give you a brief overview of what you find now, and then we'll start the next session with what the rest of the party is doing. Um, sure. so over over the course of uh, roll me roll me a d8 um, but the minimum you can roll is four so if you roll below four we'll say it's a four ooh okay hopefully higher means good Takes you eight hours. Oh, not <laughs> saying so this is bad. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, it's, it's a late study session, unfortunately. Dang it! <laughs> um, they're still studying. That's unfortunate. Sorry, um, y'all. Ah, you'll be done by five. It's fine. Working nine to five. I mean, yeah, um, like sometimes you got to take breaks. It can be really tiring, really exhausting. I hate you so much, Jacob. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, so, you... There's a point where, like, he helps you sort of categorize and get familiar with things, but then he sort of gets to his own material. And so uh, I, I say all this because you have some... It may occur to you that... Jory is now slightly complicit <laughs> in whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it, it, even as much as you've tried to to sort of like keep the details vague, um, you're assured by the fact that he's not reading over your shoulder. This is he he doesn't know anything. He's just checked out some books for you, uh, and the books are vague enough that um, that you you pretty you feel pretty confident that. Uh, It'd be very, very hard to connect any any of your future dealings to Jory, but um, you find that you find reference to Dream Mist um, coming from a uh, Dream Mist is something that takes forms from several different flowers. Um, they're all they're referred to as Harlequin flowers. Uh, they come in different colors and they tend to have stripes. Uh, like white stripes as well as a color. The blue Harlequin flower is seen as the rarest and most prestigious of them, that the red Harlequin flowers kind of grow in groves, whereas the, the blue ones, you will find a single one perhaps in, uh, in very dark cavern systems within the Nightmire, um, which is uh, a sort of swampy territory at the southernmost area of Ventus. Mm -hmm. Um, you know that these f flowers, uh, something that occurs to you because you guys talked about it is that they do, they're known for quickly deteriorating, um, and being some like pretty fragile and that 
when they are a lot of the these harlequin flowers when they're used appropriately will provide visions uh, when, when enhanced with magic um, the blue ones particularly which is what i imagine you're focused on just for the sake of time mm-hmm. uh, the blue ones particularly when these visions when when the vapors are are inhaled in a specific location you can see visions of what happened in that location from a previous time um they are quite rare uh they just i'm I'm giving a variety of information you you should never drink it you should only inhale the fumes uh and a single flower can provide a vision for up to 10 people. Um, but you feel with this information and what Mouse sort of shared about specifics, that probably saying, like, if they only grow in the Nightmire, then being able to find one here in Consonance it should be a specific enough description to say a blue harlequin flower. Perfect. Or, and mm-hmm. or to provide the description. Right. Whew. Um, and we will end the game there so that uh, next game we'll have some time to wrap up, uh, wrap up your day of study with Jory. We'll see what the rest of the party is doing over those eight plus hours. And then, uh, and then we'll see where we go from there. And I'm glad that we're playing, we're still playing next Monday. So not that far away in theory. Yep. Very good. Okay. Uh, thanks all for obviously for playing, but also for your patience. I'm sorry that we got so delayed. How dare you get COVID? Uh, sucks. <laughs> all good. Kevin. Just, yeah. I'm just glad that you're healthy.